listen to that wind. It's gonna blow the window in in a minute. Pull that bit off, sucker it on, and they are solid. It's deep enough now to take this waste. Got Terry down there, getting the tiles in. I was expecting to come out this morning and find all the fence, garden fences down. I assume this is some sort of electrician's hat. So all that field there is being dug up, ready for ground source heating. Right, so I had a problem with these Nipex cutters. They keep tram lining. Look at that, look. Three tram lines now. So, just measured it. That's what we're out. That one is perfectly in line. That's your 150. See, there's always a way to get round things. These things happen. It's real world plumbing. Right, things are definitely moving on at the barn. I've just got back here after probably a week or so away and we've now got tiles going on, all downstairs, all in the kitchen area. Kitchen's coming the end of the week, I think. Um, right, but what we're here to do, we're here for a couple of days now. We've got this little cloak room to do. We've got to get this tray 1500 by 900, so it's a little one, into here. Now the waste, can't really see because these shadows. The waste for the tray is coming out around this point here. So what I'm going to do, first thing, is cut that waste pipe flush, lay the tray in, mark up where the waste is going to go, and then we can just channel out, really shadows, then we can just channel out a little bit of the, little bit of the floor there, mark up where the waste is going to go, and then we can set this tray in. And it just means that then once this tray is in the toilet, we can get this one done and we can move on to the bathrooms that are upstairs, like the Jack and Jill bathroom. If you haven't seen, if you're new to the channel and you haven't seen what we've been doing on this barn, I'll pop a link up into the corner and you can check out the whole process of what we've been doing for the last three months, I think I've been here doing it. But you can check that out and see exactly what's been going on. There's been, so, we've literally done everything, underfloor heating, first fix, second fix, we're just beginning to put bathrooms in, so no good me telling you, pop and have a look at the link. Um, but we will today get this tray in. So moving this tray around isn't the easiest thing to do. So it's a 1500 by 900. So I've put it there out of the way for the minute. What we're going to do is slice this, flush the floor, and then we can work out the waste roughly going to go around here. But if I slice this off, we can then get the tray into position, lie it down completely flat with exactly where it's going to go, mark that hole out there onto where the floor is and then we can chop the floor out there and base where the bottom of the trap's going to be and pipe back from that into that soil pipe. So that's that cut flush, just grab the level to see where we are with the floor, if you can make the bubble out, but the floor is, which I know it would be, it's bang on level on all ways. So we know. Yeah. Perfect. So we know the floor is completely flat, so that's a big out from, from the off. What I do with these trays, this is going to be, I say it every time, people are going to go, you shouldn't do it like this, right? I silicon these down. Either silicon them down or use CT1 or Dura Plus or something like that. Some people use tile adhesive, some people sand and cement. I've used silicon for 25 odd years. However long I've been in the game, I've always used silicon. Never ever had a problem with it. So you stick to what you know. And people go, well, if ever there's an issue with it, manufacturers will never pay out. Unless you do it on a Tuesday between bloody four and five and there's a full moon and this, that and the other, jump through hoops, they won't pay out anyway. Uh, but I'm not gonna risk doing something that I haven't done before when I know the way I do it works. So, we'll clean this all up now, get the tray into position, give it a test fit, and I said, mark that up there. And also, if you want an easy way to move trays around, get yourself a set of these, they're like, just them sucker pads. I think they're like, I think they're originally like, like a glazer's one for moving glass about, but get yourself some sucker pads, and I've done it before. If you are moving around, make sure you take the film off. I've done it, I'm sure. I'm sure a few of you have, where you just put the sucker on, because you can hardly see, that, put it onto the film, gone to lift it up and the film's come off. So just pull that bit off, 
sucker it on and they are solid. I mean this this weighs a fair old fair old bit and it'll move that round not a problem. If, if even if it's just for you know that point when you're laying laying it down on the floor and you've got to lift it up to try and lift it back up. It's just much easier to do it with a set of them. tray into its position now I've marked up the waste where we're gonna to have to chop the floor out and then that waste trap will sit obviously sunk down there uh, we're parallel on this wall we're parallel on that wall but it's running out ever so slightly down there it's only about five or six mil but when Terry comes to tile that he's just gonna build that end corner out ever so slightly to keep it all parallel because what we didn't want to do is chop this end in chop this end in to, to square a tray off these two parallel walls because we're sitting flush with that, flush with that, and then we can just build that out because the way the tiles are going to go, if you did that, it would stand out like a sore thumb. So they'll sort that out when it comes to tiling. I say it's only going to be six or seven mil, plus the tiles that are going in here are quite thick anyway. So that's not going to be an issue. Right, we've got that marked up. We'll whip this out again now. This is where these come in handy because I can just lift it up and out it will come, saving trying to get your fingers under there, which you'll never do. Right, we'll lift that out, get this chopped out, and work out exactly where that trap's going. chopped out now just about deep enough to get that in I'm just going to take a little bit out of this insulation here just to sink the trap down a little bit lower because it's just probably about five mil too too proud get that out then we're going to try and get this out and then we've got a fit in in the bottom there get a bung in then we'll get that waste popped into the side there Right, finally, after some faffing around, we chopped the bottom of that out. So it's deep enough now to take this way. So what we'll do, I've marked the centre line there, and the centre line across there, so we know roughly that that is going to sit there. But what I'm going to do is put a bit of pipe in there, then we can get the tray down on top of this, and just see what little bit of movement we've got, then lift it up, mark it up, and get it all glued into position. So this trap then is then set into position then we can look at bedding the tray down so dry fitted that and we'll drop now the tray down we'll drop it down and see if that lines up right as you can see it's just about 10 15 mil too short this is the perfect reason why to test fit it first dry fit it first because you know we need to make up just that little bit. You could probably get it by pulling it over, but I don't want to put too much strain on this trap. So we just whip it up, cut another bit, 10 mil longer, it should be fine. There we go, the longer bit, that's perfect. Now that lines up perfectly to the thread on the bottom of the trap. So when we've got the tray bedded in now, we'll just be able to put the, the top bit in, screw it in, and we'll be perfect. So I lift the tray up now without moving that, glue that bit of pipe in, Make sure all the connections are tight. Then we can sweep out under here, put a bit of silicon down, and drop the tray in. Then what I like to do is just put a little squirt of silicon around here. Just stops the washer moving when you uh, go to drop the tray down. So it keeps it centralised on there. And then while you're here, you might as well just put a little bit around the top. There's no harm in it. I've just been and pinched the bucket of muck off Dougie, the bricky, just to fill this with. We'll get it filled in and we'll still have a little bit of movement on that before it sets so that when the tray goes in, we can just wiggle it around a little bit and get it spot on. So I'll fill this out now, get all this packed in, and then we can get the tray in. Go 
we bedded around that trap just, just to hold it nice and firm. We've got a little bit of movement now. So we're going to put a load of silicon on the bottom of the tray now and then drop it into position and uh, get it all sealed in. Sealed down the side, sealed down the side, down the back. We'll bridge that little bit of a, a gap at the back with a bit of silicon and then they're going to build it out anyway. So let's get the tray in. So that's in, flush with the wall, flush with the wall. The trap's in line, so we'll just now get the top bit siliconed up and screwed in. So we've put a bead of silicon around just the lip and then they come with some little crosses in there, marry up with that. It just allows you to uh, screw that in really easily like so. tight and then we'll just get rid of the silicon around the top making sure it's gone in everywhere sometimes just pop a little bit more in like that at the end of the day we can get it all out anyway perfect and then just go on the outside and then the cap and the cap just sits there so what we do now we'll put some silicon down there Silicon down the back, silicon along that edge, bit along the front, and we're good to go. That's that shower tray in and sorted, it weren't too bad in the end. As long as you set that trap exactly where it's got to go, you shouldn't have any issues. The floor was level, I put a level across the tray, everything's fine, so we've sealed it in. It's got a little bit more to go in there. But uh, yeah, it's a job done, so we can get on tiling it now. So things are moving on at the barn, as you can see. Got Terry down there, getting the tiles in of the, on the downstairs area, all tucked around the back there, all down there. We've got a bathroom in there to get on, but today we are to finish off this bathroom. Now, it's all in, in position, toilets in, sinks in, baths in, those nightmare taps are in. However, nothing's connected up here because everything is in this little cubby hole. So I will take you in and show you exactly what's what. Right, these two are the shower pipes. So what we're gonna do is trim a little bit out of this joist there, and we'll poke through, drill through this joist here, and connect onto this plastic hot and cold that we've got in here. As I always say, that lights in my eyes, as I always say, on these big first fixes, a lot of it is done in plastic that you can't see. Wherever you can see pipe work, I'll do it in copper. However, for speed, time, cost, we do a lot of it in plastic. So behind here, I say we'll connect the shower pipes into there. Behind here, we'll drill through here and take it straight along to pick up. And if you can see, there's two pipes down the end. They're the pipes that are feeding the bath. And then we can also come off there and feed the cistern. And we've got a soil stack, if you can make it out in the corner there. That's gonna run round run along, pick up the basin, sorry the basin's got to pick up the hot and colds as well. So it's like a run along, pick up the waste in the basin, drop into it and obviously pick up the back of the toilet. Everything is accessible down the back here which is perfect so we'll get some materials up, get the drills up, get the multi-tools up, get these cut out, get everywhere marked up where we've got to get to and get pipes in and then that's another bathroom completely ticked off. We've got another Jack and Jill bathroom to do and um, the copper bath still got to go in the main bathroom. I don't know how I'm going to get saw pipe through this little doorway though. So we just drill through these joists, push two sets of pipes through. We're here, so we're just connecting here. T into these hot coals, come off, T up into the toilet, T off into the basin, and then T down there to connect into the bath. Uh, I've marked the hot. We'll, um, I'm going to put the hot on the bottom, cold on the top, just so that when we come to do the um, when we come to do the toilet, I can just come straight off the top with the T. Just makes life a little bit easier. So, I've marked the pipe, we'll just cut this one here. You watch it disappear through the floor. All right. And then cut it there where I've marked it. Pop the inserts in. Insert into that, and insert into there. A lot of people, when they say about push fit, 
they say oh it's no good it blows off the only time i've ever had an issue and it was years ago and i forgot to put one insert in and a pipe blew off other than that every time i put issues in touch wood i've never ever had an issue with them at all to be fair i rate them i think they're great i think it's great you know copper where you see it plastic where you don't I've not got an issue with it at all You get a lot of people going, oh, you're a plastic plumber. 25 years in the game, I've done plenty of full heating systems in copper when you had to notch joists and bend pipe work in, in the old house bashing. I used to do house bashing years ago for brand new builds and you'd stand in the front garden bending up a load of copper. I've done my fair share of copper work. I do enjoy copper, but as I said, this is just a lot faster. Perfect example, that's done now. So now we can move on along, tee off for the cistern, tee off for the basin and down for the bath. So I've just noticed on the back of this cistern where the connection is, is here, right where that is. So I'm gonna undo this little block that we put in for the frame, move it up so the bottom of it is just along there and then we can trim out a tiny bit out the side here and I can bring the connection down to the pipe and across there. Just makes life a hell of a lot easier than trying to get something to drop in between there. There's no there's no point in trying that, I might as well just bring it into here, but we'll shift this out of the way first. It's Friday morning and we're in the middle of Hurricane what is it? Eunice? Whatever it is, is out there blowing a gale. So it's the morning of, it's all over the news last night. So I was expecting to come out this morning and find all the fence, garden fences down, but they're still up at the moment. So touch wood. Um, and also, I assume this is some sort of electrician's hack, electrician's tip, putting gloves over the down lighters. I guess it's because the decorators have only dust coated the ceiling. So they've obviously got to do it again. And it just says the down light is getting covered in crap. See, it's not just plumbing tips you get on here as well. Sparky tips. Right, today we're gonna to carry on. I'll just take you up here. Progress is being made on the bar. The Jack and Jill bathroom is now fully grouted up. So we've got the toilet pan to go in. Flush, flush is somewhere. Somewhere knocking around. And then obviously the frame for the basin. Drop the basin on top, put the shower in as well. And then also, we're still waiting. There's an issue with the grout in this bathroom. Showers are, toilets here, basins in a previous video. I'll link to the top to the video of me fitting these, those taps. And obviously we're waiting because this is where the big copper bath's going inside this bathroom, but there's an issue with the grout. It was meant to be a different colour grout or something, but it was bagged up or bagged up wrong or labelled wrong or whatnot. But they've had a rep out and um, they've got to sort something out with the grout. So we're just waiting for that bit to be done before finally fitting that bath. And as you can see, if you can pick it up, they're digging out through the field for the ground source heating that's going in. So all that field there is being dug up, ready for ground source heating. Or at least the pipe work to go in. It's a big old job that is. Today we are back in my little Harry Potter's broom cupboard. If I can put the light, where are we? There we go. So we're back in here, finishing off the pipe work in here that feeds this bathroom. That's the pipe work all in now for the back of the, the bath, the basin connected in, cistern and the shower. What we're doing now is getting the soil pipe in. So I've got an elbow on here. I've measured that bit of pipe and cut that. It's gonna be there. But because we've got a floating toilet, it's quite high up, trimmed out there, 
and I've worked out exactly where it's going to run to here so we'll get this bit pushed in, get this bit pushed in get some clips on there and then I think what we're going to have to do to get it into that is 45 it in but also we've got to cut a strap boss in for that basin but we'll get the pipe working first because it's easy to just cut the strap boss in afterwards so we've got that in, that's going to sit roughly about there to pick up the back of the pan but what I want to do, because this just goes straight down here I want to try and fit an air admittance valve, a Durgo in somewhere here so I'll just cut a branch in, come up and just put it there um, and then we can connect that boss in then but I'm just conscious that we don't want to be pulling anything back on it so we can't really come off there and up so that's going to be the highest point so I'll put it probably come up to sort of about here right that was a lot of faffing around we've got a large barn on this job that's got everything in it if you ever worked on like can't really see me here if you ever worked on a job like this you'll know there's always like a store cupboard with fucking everything in I needed Two forty fives, two four inch forty fives. I couldn't find any anywhere. I thought I had some, but I weren't. Anyway, I've been rattling around this barn trying to find them. Found them now, so now we can get this saw pipe in here. I've come off the branch there, trim this down, get a collar on the end, like so. Trim it down, get this in, get two brackets on it. Then we can drill down for the waste and finally get out of this little bloody cupboard because it's hurting my back now. Right, so that's in. I've test fitted that and it's perfect. So what we're going to do is glue inside here, glue the saw pipe. Then the good thing with this, because it's on a couple of fittings, we've got a good bit of movement in that end. So we can literally make that up, glue it up and push it in like so. Which makes life a hell of a lot easier. Sometimes when you've got a fixed point on the saw pipe, it can be a real pain try and get in but luckily this one's all right so we'll lift that go out there pop that in give it a turn just to spread that glue all the way around like so and then what i'll do i've got these brackets and now screw them perfectly into position i'm going to get this gun Get them screwed up, bit of pipe in there, dirt on the top of there, then we can cut the boss in here. Again, I've just been to the store, we've only got black 45s on site. The builder has just bought, bought a load of random stuff or stuff that we've carried over from other jobs that we've done. So, you know, as I said, it's his house, he's not overly bothered what sort of fittings and what colour we're using in the back of here. Um, because we know what these builders are like, they want to save a few quid here, there, and everywhere. So we've got black, grey gonna have white waste pipe black 45s but at the end of the day it's gonna work no one's gonna see it it's not a problem so if I go off and get two white 45s it's probably an hour's round journey just makes no sense does it so we'll bang them in here right so I had a problem with these nipex cutters they keep tram lining on this bit of pipe so let me have a little test cut now there you go you see? So I've had not a problem with them, they've been good as gold. Look at that look, three tram lines now. Been as good as gold up until now. Again, straight away. Anything to save the builder a few quid. Multicoloured fittings. Grey, white, black. At least that basin's in now. Basin's in connected. This is all connected. In, we've just got to bring off a bit of saw pipe up there. There go on the top, isolation valves are off. So we're just about done in here, I can finally get out. We're all done in the little cubby on now, so in principle this bathroom's finished, everything's connected up, waste are connected up, showers on, connected up. Scott's gonna get a custom made shower screen to go on here because we've got that lip there. So we've got a company that'll come out, measure it up, cut the glass, temper the glass, hard, fully hardened glass with a door. The good thing is as well, they'll fit it, because I can ain't fitting shower screens. So, Friday afternoon. We always like a nice, easy job on a Friday afternoon. So we're gonna start in the Jack and Jill bathroom. Got the shower unpacked, what is it? It's an Aqualesia, I think. Yeah, it is. Aqualesia AQ collection. So I'm not, not sure if you've seen this bathroom since it's been completely tiled. 
Someone's going to comment on the taps being on the bath. I've already gone through that. Watched the last one of the last videos on it. I've already gone through that. It's not a problem at all. So don't worry about it. Uh, showers going on here, obviously. So we'll cut these, get this on. Nice little, uh, nice little job to finish a Friday off. We're going to start fitting this shower now into position, but I think whether when Terry's tiled it, he just didn't want to cut out too far here because we're about 10 mil too short this way. Should be 150 centers. And I think what he's done, he's pushed it over slightly to get the cut on there. So we're gonna to have to sort of address that in a minute. But a little trick for, well, not a little trick, a little tip for you. When you're doing these, always push these on into position like so. And then, where's my pencil? And then, Hold it into position. Mark the very edge there. Just get your nip of your, nip of your pencil right in. And then when you pull that off, that is the point that you need to cut to. So if you come in a couple of mil there, if you cut there, you know you've got enough room there to get that on and the pipe isn't going to stick out the other end. So do the same for this side. Push it all the way home. Do it. That's it. Push it all the way down like so. Mark just inside like that. Take that off. You can see the mark, and then so you can cut two or three mil inside there. Because then, if you take that off and push just the bracket back and the olive, you can get it. You're going to be well within a bit of pipe coming out the end. We've got to address this little issue first, I think. What I may do because these covers, there's quite a bit of room on these covers, so you may be able to just trim that little bit out, just come off there, break that little corner bit out, and then that will cover the hole anyway. But these are the issues you get sometimes, you know, they might have moved a little bit or whatever, but. Sometimes I usually put like a little brace in the back and poke them out for some reason. I didn't do it on this, so it's not a problem. We can sort it out. It's how you get over these things. Little issues like this, it's not a problem. It's how you get over them. So just measured it. That's what we're out. That one is perfectly in line. That's your 150, and it looks like, I think that's what it is. I think Terry's just pushed it over a little bit to, to not lose that bit. But as I said, the shroud, as is there, so if we shifted the shroud over and just take the lat little bit of the tile out there, it's going to cover it anyway, not a problem. And then we can still drill the tile to get the fixing on. See, there's always a way to get round things. These things happen. It's real world plumbing. So we've got the eBay special drill bits. I'm just going to drill a couple of tiny little holes here, tiny little holes here, and just take the tire, side of that tile out and then shift that pipe across. I just drilled two little holes through the tile there, so it's just made two little weak points. So I just tap them out now with a flat headed screwdriver, then we can move that pipe across. There we go, look, I can just push that across now. But once that plate goes on, what I'm gonna do, I just put some silicon around the back of there before we screw it up, just to make sure it's sealed. All done, into position, just move that one across, and then now the valve lines up perfectly. So just a little tweak, I'm going to get some silicone, just seal around there, just to cover that gap up a little bit. But yeah, the shrouds will cover it. Yeah, you can see the back plate covers it anyway, but the shrouds will cover it. So yeah, just easy enough to just shift it across. Just have to be dead, gentle, careful not to crack the tiles, but just by drilling them two points out, just took the pressure off the tile. Little tap, shift it across. There's the valve on. Plate's covering that upper tree. So what we'll do now, we'll get the riser on, bring it out as fairly high to the scene as we can, and then bring the body one off the bottom. So we've got the riser made up now, just putting that on. Sometimes there's a certain way to put it on so that that sits wider at the top for the head of the uh, shower to go in. So that just pops on there like so. And then you've got this, which sits in the back there like that so we'll work out we'll make sure that's level upright and level that way mark the outside 
of that and then we can work out where the centre is, drill that back to the wall and then we can just slacken this off here and that top bit slides up to exactly where you want it. Right there we go, that's that shower in, sorted, another one ticked off the list. We're slowly getting through all these little jobs at the barn. Listen to that wind, it's going to blow the window in in a minute. Right, thanks for watching, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button and catch you next time. Yeah.